In the Windows operating system, we essentially have four types of container technology that we leverage today. Uh, internally, they were named after uh, noble gases uh, in terms of lightest to heaviest, representing the overall footprint and performance impact of using them. And they each offer increasing levels of isolation. The lightest one is called a helium container, which provides a process or group of process scoping of namespace and file system access. This is what Centennial apps or you know, uh, compartmentalized Win32 apps from the store are built on. The next step up from that is something called Argon containers, which is what Windows Server containers are built on. In these containers, we actually run all of the user mode, starting from the initial process session manager, SMSS, all the way through uh, services, et cetera, and then the actual workload itself. And these are what's distributed in most server uh, container scenarios like Docker, et cetera. The next step above that is something called Krypton containers. And Krypton containers are a variation of the heaviest type called Xenon containers, which are externally known as Hyper-V containers. So I'll talk about that first and come back to Kryptons. So a Hyper-V container is essentially what we described with Argon, except what it does is it has a small wrapping virtual machine around it, a lightweight virtual machine, a small kernel that we call the utility kernel image, which runs an Argon container inside. And those are what we ship externally as Hyper-V containers. If you blend the line between the argon and the kernel image that's inside and just have a lightweight VM, that's what's called a Krypton container. Today, the features Windows Defender Application Guard and Windows Sandbox are built against the Krypton container technology.